Okay, I don't have video, so you just get to look at this nice picture. Oh, darn it. Uh, whatever. Okay. <laughs> Are you on your phone? Is that what the uh, is that what's going on? No, actually, I uh, bought a new PC, and I never um, thought to buy a webcam, so <laughs> I just don't have one. <laughs> Okay, cool. It didn't. So it didn't come with. Um, it didn't come with a camera, huh? Well, it's a desktop, so I ended up not having one. I had to buy like a monitor separately and everything. Oh, okay, cool. Well, then, um, I guess there's no reason for everyone to come over here, right? <laughs> well, I mean, I could just stare at you guys really creepily, and you won't be able to see me. I'm all right with that. That might be nice. Um, <laughs> let me think. I can. Um, do we need the sound? Let me try putting this just at the table then, because maybe you can. You can see everybody, even okay. though even though we can't see you. Um, I don't know. Can you see everybody? Yeah, you guys are looking a little bit more. Okay. Well, um, it's uh, you're here with the the current senior class. Maybe we'll go around the room and everyone will introduce themselves and say hi. Starting with. I'm almost positive I actually know everyone. I know, but <laughs> by the way, in, in, when you have conference calls, you usually when you get on the line, you uh say that you're there. It's a, it's a courtesy so uh, people don't think you're like eavesdropping on the call or you don't like suddenly startle people in the middle of a call with a comment or something. So okay. just so you know for business. So All Nick, right. why don't you uh, let Maureen know that you're here. Hey Maureen, I'm here. Hi. Hi, I'm here. I'm Andrew. You don't know Andrew, Hi. do you? Oh, I don't think I do actually. No. <laughs> <laughs> Maureen, it's Nate. Hope you're well. Hey, Maureen, it's Danny Flanagan. Hey, Maureen, it's Camille. Hello, Maureen. This is Brian Petillo. Hey, Maureen, it's Ryan. Hi, Maureen, it's Cara. I like your photo. I don't know what it is. Oh, thanks. <laughs> yeah, I feel like it's a very accurate portrait of me. <laughs> It is emotionally. It's an emotional landscape yeah. of Maureen. <laughs> um, so, um, thanks for doing this, Maureen. Yeah, no problem. I thought we'd start out by, I wanted to ask you, like, what your senior year at Champlain was like and, and what you would do differently. Um, okay. The senior year for me was actually kind of just like this giant blur of work. I was working two jobs and doing full-time class. And um, towards the end of the year, I was actually traveling back and forth to New York to do shoots. Um, what I probably would have done differently is shoot my thesis way earlier than I did because because I didn't do it in time. I ended up missing out on a really awesome film festival in Maine. Um, and I wish I could have gone because pretty much everyone went except me and I think one other person who had made the same mistake I did. So... Um, I don't know. I really wish I had juggled work and like homework and enjoying myself a lot better than I did. I also would have, um, in terms of what my work was with my thesis, I definitely would have hired a sound guy in retrospect. Because you, you had trouble with sound? I had terrible trouble with sound. I vaguely knew what I was doing, but I was so overwhelmed with directing and producing and um and all that other stuff. I was so caught up in everything else that sound completely skipped my mind. And then when it came to sitting in post and having the finished picture done and having no sound on it, I had to ask for help from someone who was essentially untrained hands. And I got what I paid for, which was little to nothing. Okay. So those are, those are, those are excellent words of warning to everybody. Um, and what, what, um, so you, you graduated and you wore the robe and all that stuff. And then, and then what happened? Um, I graduated and I stayed in Vermont for a little while longer. Actually, the day of Rob's final, I, Thompson and I went back to New York to work on a music video. And that was the first like official shoot that I was a legitimate department as opposed to just a general PA. Um, I worked in the art department on that, and I was a uh, set dresser on it. And um, after I graduated, I hung out in Vermont for a little while, worked a couple more weeks at the job that I was working, and then moved back to New York and immediately rushed headfirst into trying to get jobs. And um, I worked a lot of free stuff. You kind of have to pay your dues when you first get out. 
because uh, and people will take advantage of you for being a student. They'll get you to do a whole bunch of crazy things like drive cube trucks and do runs for craft and which by the way, um, anyone who doesn't know craft services is just like food on set. Um, and usually the set, like the set lackey takes care of it. It's usually general PA. Um, Except yeah, on union so I, shoots where the craft services union. What was that? Except on a union shoot where craft service is actually, it's, it's yeah. like done by fancy skilled people who. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you get lucky and you're on a union shoot where, you know, every department is every department and you're not juggling six or seven jobs at once. Um, but they're hard to get into if you are fresh out of school union shoots, I found. And, um, I worked a lot of independent stuff when I first got out. Like I did a, I did a feature with Nick Galante over the summer and um, that legitimately was special hell because it was so poorly orchestrated that um, it almost wasn't, it almost wasn't worth the trouble that I went through to do it. But it was, it was a good experience. It was interesting to see everything that could go wrong on a feature going wrong. Um, but yeah, I, I kind of just, I did a little bit of general PA work. I dipped my toes into a little bit of every department to kind of see, to feel around and see what I really wanted to do. I did do, I, originally I was going into production. I thought I was going to end up being a line producer or a production manager because I did enjoy doing that. And I was lucky enough to work alongside a couple of really good ones, really good production managers, and realized that I didn't want to die of a heart attack at 25. So I opted out of that route and ended up getting into the art department, which is where I am now as a production designer and a set dresser. Now, now talk to us about, um, there's a bunch of things uh, I want you to talk about. Um, one of them is, so you said your first shoot was um, when you skipped my class. Uh, I did not skip it. We were there and we skipped I know, I was just joking. I was joking. I said you could go. But... Um, uh, so that was your first that was your first real uh, time in a department. But you were working in New York and and elsewhere on uh, shoots before you left school, right? Yeah, I did one. It was um, a bunch of us did it actually. It was a subway series with NYU students. Um, they had won some kind of writing competition where they wrote a script based around a subway sandwich shop, and they won and were able to be funded to produce the. It was like a web. It was like a three or four episode web series, and um, I worked on that with a couple other Champlain students, and um, I worked direct as a PA under the production manager on that. So I ended up doing a lot of runs and like set, essentially like maintenance around set, like making sure craft was always stocked and um, running around and picking up any additional props or dressing that we needed for the set and picking up did a lot of general PA work, essentially. It was like picking up actors and stuff like that. It's kind of a mixed bag. And now some of the, some of the people in here are interested in a production uh, path, like doing line producing or production coordinating, that kind of thing. And I, I heard you mention um, dying at age 25. <laughs> Can you um, talk to them about like, what your experience with that is? Uh, for me personally, um, New York is very, very fast paced. There was actually, I worked for Maybelline for a week during fashion week and, um, I was, I was actually pulled aside by the production manager and told that I'm not moving fast enough. And if I don't move fast enough, I'm going to lose my job as in like, I wasn't running like a chicken without a head. And, um, in terms of like being on the production end of things, it's really stressful when it's low budget stuff because you're trying to make, from what I've noticed, you try to make everybody happy and you just can't. And then you end up pulling your hair out over it. And um, I did like help out. I was a second AD um, once or twice. Um, I helped out like, specifically was working with the production managers and line producers on a couple of things. And um, I just, I didn't like it because it, you know, the, the whole paperwork and budgeting thing is one side of it, but there's another aspect of pretty much taking care of everyone all the time that I noticed they did. And it was just, for me personally, it was overwhelming, but that doesn't mean that it's overwhelming for everybody. 
I mean, there are different approaches to it. Some people are like very calm when it comes to getting into that suit and they kind of can just tackle things in a very organized manner. And um, I know I'm speaking like in very vague terms right now, but I've just seen, I've been on a couple of different types of shoots and depending on what you're shooting, um, the producer plays a different role in each of them. Like I've seen producers take over entire sets on shorts before. And then I've worked on music videos where the producers take a very backseat and you barely see them or hear from them. Um, so I, I'm not exactly sure what par for the course is for them, but um, when I was working as a PA for them, it was just very, very stressful. And everything needed to be done yesterday. <laughs> it was that kind of um, mentality. Now, what are the things that you're enjoying about art department? Um, essentially, my job entails doing arts and crafts all day and hanging out with my friends and getting paid for it. Um, I like I really got into scenic painting, which is um, when people you know paint walls and props and stuff like that. That's what scenics do, typically. Um, and aside from that, I got really into prop building. I recently built this like huge back computer room which I posted a while ago on the group and it came out really phenomenally and everyone was really happy with it. So I've been, I've been getting jobs actually because of that. Um, I've had, I've had additional people want to hire me because of that, that build. Um, but mostly I haven't been doing too much carpentry. So um, that's kind of a weak suit for me, but uh, with art department and the indie scene, you kind of need to wear all the hats because there are a lot of different, like if you look at the credits on a feature, art department, it's huge because you have your prop people, you have your set dressers, you have your shoppers who are people who go and buy stuff for the set dressers. You have your art director, your production designer, you have your scenic painters, it, like the list goes on and on of all these different roles. And when you're working on an independent shoot, your art department usually consists of two to three people and you're all doing everything all the time. Um, but I actually, I love it. It's really, it's a lot of manual labor and we work really closely with um, G&E. What, uh, what's G&E? Uh, Grip and Electric Department. It's all the people who do the lighting and rigging. Okay. So, um, yeah, we've been, I've worked really closely alongside of them and there was actually a shoot where I ended up kind of swinging between being the art director <laughs> and being a grip at the same time, which was interesting. But, um, yeah, it's it's been fun work so far. Anyone want to start with questions? You can ask about anything. You guys are going to be out in the world in like two months. Um, yeah, Maureen, can you talk a little bit about uh, the cost of living in New York and how that's going? How you handle? Oh boy, <laughs> I actually I ran into some pretty hard financial times where I went completely bankrupt for a while and had to move back in with my parents, which is, I'm living with my mom right now, which is a little embarrassing. Um, but I really recommend that you find some really good friends or you find some really cheap rooms in Brooklyn. And if you're going to go, if you're going to do the renting route that you find roommates first, like you live with people because it'll sp splitting the cost of everything is going to be a lot easier than trying to live on your own there. Um, I've lived in New York my whole life, so I'm a little jaded about it. Like when someone throws a rent number at me, like, oh, this, like living in this apartment is like a thousand a month. I'm just like, oh, that's pretty low. Um, typically, rent will run you, depending on the neighborhood, rent will run you anywhere from 600 to a thousand a month, and that's not including utilities. Um, so yeah, actually, uh, good people to talk to about that if you're interested in knowing a little bit about the market would be. Eric Sorensen, he just moved into Queens. So he recently went through this whole thing of trying to find a place and moving in. And I'm actually planning on moving to Boston because I got hired with an agency that is based out of there. Um, they're a production design agency. They do print ads and commercials and sometimes do prop builds. Um, and it's kind of like consistent freelance. It's, it's a little weird, but it's been working so far. So by March, I should be moving to Boston. So did you say Boston? Yeah. Is, was anyone here thinking about going to Boston? I can't remember. Yeah, that was me. Oh, Nick was. And is there enough production? So there's enough production in Boston for that, that company to work there, huh? Uh, yeah, actually, they, they're a little, they have offices in Boston, New York, and L.A. 
So when I work for them, it's a crapshoot what city I'm going to end up in. Um, well, more recently, I've been bo considered Boston local with them, but um, I was just asked today to do a job in New Hampshire, which I unfortunately can't take. It's a bummer. And um, they did ask me how comfortable I was with being shipped off to LA. So there is the potential for that as well. Um, but they are primarily in Boston and they primarily do photo shoots for stores like TJ Maxx, Home Goods, uh, Marshalls. And um, they do a lot of print ad stuff like photo shoots for magazines. And um, I was kind of hesitant to go for that at first, honestly, like getting signed on with an agency like that. But the unfortunate side of film in general is that it at first will not pay your bills at all it'll it's a nice it's a nice little you know egg in your basket but you're gonna have to look other places for work like getting into doing commercials and um docu like doing documentaries which some people are interested in like um thompson has been working a lot for the discovery channel doing this show called i killed my bff which i'm actually working with him at the end of this month on that um but yeah, you kind of you kind of have to do a bunch of different things in order to make money at first, and then when you finally get to be good enough to be in the union, that's when you can start like living off of it consistently. Or so I've been told. I'm obviously not at that point yet, but um, I got really good advice from this production designer who had been working in the industry for 35 years, and um, she told me unless you're in LA, you're going to have to do print ads too because you know, they, they hire set designers to put together the backgrounds that they have their models stand in. And uh, photographers sometimes have people like us come into their studios and set them up. So, yeah, it's it's kind of venturing outside of the industry but still staying in entertainment. If that made any sense. And um, we know that uh, you might end up working for free in the art department. The fact is you're just plain going to have to do that um, – some in order to make connections um, and what what are the different amounts of pay that people get for different types of jobs in New York uh, huh I've really only worked as a general PA and in the art department specifically as a set dresser mostly and I have done a production designer um, a couple of times it really varies on what the production is willing to spend on you. I have a lot of friends, I've met a lot of friends who are grips um, and they tell me that I actually get paid more than they do, which is interesting because they do harder work than I do. I feel like, um, but I, I typically, my day rate typically goes between 150 and 300, depending on how large the production is. So, and that doesn't that doesn't count for overtime typically. Um, as a production designer, I ask for more because I'm technically the production designer is technically the head of the art department. Um, so in that role, I can you know requ request 300 per day. But if I'm just a set dresser, I usually will do it for you know 150 to 200. It really just depends on how high up the chain of command you are. And the higher up you are, and you know, if you're a department head, you can ask for more than if you are lower down and one of the general mass of the crew. Where in where is it cool to live in Queens now? Um. Well, I personally hate Queens, but I'm also from Brooklyn, so that's probably why I don't like Queens all that much. <laughs> um. Astoria is actually really cool. Astoria is a very Greek neighborhood, so it's very flushed with like Mediterranean culture there. Um, as a downside of that, it's very flushed with Mediterranean culture, so like everyone speaks Greek there. Um, can't remember exactly where Eric lives, but it's kind of right on the border between Brooklyn and Queens. It's like right as you get in there. Long Island City. No, it's not Long Island City. It's just the B, and it's just like right on the tip of my tongue right now. But um, I honestly, I would recommend living in Brooklyn as opposed to Queens or Manhattan. Brooklyn just has a, like for me, Brooklyn is just a lot more accessible. There's a lot more stuff going on here typically. And it's also a very artsy neighborhood because a lot of, you know, 
hipsters, I guess you can call them, are moving in and opening up art studios and um, theaters and stuff of that nature all around. And then Manhattan is if you're rich, you can live there. <laughs> but if you're not, then you're stuck elsewhere. Cool. Any, um, Danny, you got any questions? Uh, um, I mean, uh, has uh, could you talk about how you how you find jobs? Oh yeah, actually that's an easy question for me. Um, it originally started that I went on this website Mandy dot com, and um, it's actually a film production website. They post jobs for all departments in all states. So you can do a general search in all states for a specific department, or you can just look at all the jobs. They have listings divided by low to low, no pay, and deferred payment, and then they have paid jobs. Um, I started there, and I just sent, I kind of sent out my resume everywhere and just put my feelers out there, put my name out there, and specified what I already know how to do. Um, Cover letters, even though they're not required, are really important, and I highly recommend that even if you're not writing a proper cover letter, like in a Word format or a PDF or whatever, that you write one in your email and kind of introduce yourself, tell them what you're into, even if it's a general PA position, because people do like when you go there and you apply as a PA and you say, well, I'd like to work alongside this department, because then they have finite jobs for you to do, and they know that you'll always be kept busy by someone. Um, but I recommend kind of sitting down and writing down what skills you have and then trying to figure out what you want to improve on. And then in your cover letter writing, you know, I can do this, this, and this. I am interested in doing this. I have experience doing this, like pretty basic cover letter type stuff. And just sounding enthusiastic about the project, even if you're not really excited, if you want it, like you're like, if you're looking at a project and you're like, well, this doesn't sound too great, but it would be a good place for me to start, just sound really enthused about getting on the team, and you'll be more likely to be responded to than not. But don't be discouraged if people aren't getting back to you, because I can tell you I've sent out over 100 emails and collectively gotten maybe 50, back, 50 responses back total. But um, after you start getting those preliminary jobs, on every shoot you work on, you're going to meet people that you just get along with and that will hire you in the future. Most of actually in the past month, I haven't had to apply to a single job because I've been getting calls constantly for people trying to hire me to get me on shoots with them, which is why I'm actually booked out this entire month, which is a great feeling, but also really stressful because I like, I'm never home anymore. Um, but yeah, the, the best way to start to answer your question in short hand is um, just put yourself out there as much as possible, build a website, um, take photos of your sets, have a reel. If, um, if you're going into directing or cinematography, or even for, if you want to end up in a lighting department as a gaffer, um, just put yourself out there definitely. And, um, apply to everything that you think you would be qualified for. And even things that you think you might not be as qualified for. Hey, Maureen, here's a question. Um, I, when I was a kid in New York working, I, I just got hired by friends, really, or people I met on, you know, like you said, you meet people on set and they, they hire you for other stuff. These guys just did uh, first passes on resumes, and it sounds like if you have a cover letter, you have a resume. Could you talk about what should be in a resume and uh, if, should they be different for different jobs or what's worked for you? Um, they definitely are different for different jobs. Like I, um, I have at least four resumes and one, one of them is like my work-based resume. Like if I was applying to be, uh, I did apply to be at a prop house, um, to work at a prop house. So I had my actual like work, like jobs I have done in the past resume. And then I have an experience-based resume, um, which I, depending on what position I'm applying for, I'll have certain jobs listed and certain jobs not listed. Um, I can send you guys if you want my current resume that I've been sending out is my art department resume. It just lists all, all of the current, all of the jobs I've worked in the past like couple of months and what role I played on them. 
Yeah, we'd, we'd um, love to see that. I mean, I don't know if you feel comfortable with this, but you could even put it up as a file on the Champlain filmmaking site, unless you want us to just... I can send the file through, to you through Skype. Okay. How, how... So, um, <laughs> I figure out how to do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I can show you, like, this is um, the resume that I typically send out is based on what I'm applying for. Like, if I'm applying to be just the PA, which sometimes I do for, um, if I'm low on cash, I will apply just to be a general PA. So I'll list like most of the jobs I've worked on as a PA or just general jobs I've done on film sets or on commercials or whatever. And then I have my, like I said, my art resume, which is just like every job I've worked in the art department is listed there and my roles and who, one of the important things I always list is who is the director who is the production designer if I'm just an art slinger, an art PA, and who the DP is? Like, I always list those three if I have their names. Um, I'm trying to figure this out. <laughs> I haven't used Skype in a really long time. I, I think I got it. All right, cool. Um, okay, so I sent it to you. You can just accept that file and take a look at it wants to send you a file virus 81 exe okay Maureen I have no idea how to I think I oh there it is okay you got it and it's safe to open this uh no actually it's a bomb um Ryan you have any questions you're good Sorry. are you gonna you're gonna hang here I can't remember where are you gonna go when you graduate <clears throat> A couple options. Nothing entirely set yet. I don't, I don't know if I'm comfortable like, being specific. Okay. Um, anyone else? Any uh, car? You were going to go to. Well, I don't want to say car. Uh, Camille, you were going to go to New York, I think. You're, that's where you were hoping to. Yeah, nothing's really exciting stuff. New York is really great for like independent stuff. Like if it's actually, I think New York is better than LA to get started personally because um, I've had I have a couple of friends who I know who actually moved from LA to New York to get started in the industry because we do a lot of independent stuff in New York, um, and the indie scene here is actually a lot smaller than it seems. I work with the same people a lot of the time, and as a result, I have a very extended network of people in all different departments that um, when they're low on staff or need an extra hand, they will call me to come do something in that department. Um, most of the people I know know me as a art swing or a prop designer, so they'll call me to come do that. Now, Maureen, tell these guys what a swing or art swinger is. Oh, an art swing is someone who works um, a, all pretty much all the roles in the art department. Like, I will set dress, I will be the prop master, I'll be a set builder. Um, I will sometimes be a shopper or a runner. Um, there are swings in uh, and electric as well, and they kind of do the same thing. They both light and rig. Um, I know less about that than I do about art, obviously. But um, that's typically when someone says a swing, an art swing or a um, grip swing or something like that, it just means someone who works all the roles in the department. Okay. And um, uh, by the way, the file is taking like eight years to download. But um, yeah, I got a little snail next to it. It's not not feeling it. Yeah, but um, oh, uh, so Kara here is um, she's interested in in moving into uh, producing line producing type stuff. And I'm wondering, what would be um, do you know people that she could she could she's been unit producing some stuff with the DFM work studies and um. Do you, do you know anyone that she could PA for or intern for? for me? Um, actually, huh? It depends on your availability. I'm doing a shoot this week. <laughs> it's like super late notice, but uh, my friend Adam is the line producer on it, and he's an SBA student actually, but he's very good at it. He worked the feature with me over the summer as well. Um, I mean, I'll I'll look into it and get back to you specifically about if there's anything going on um, in New York that could use a PA in the production department. But um, I do know a couple of producers slash line producers that might be looking for help on things.
That'd be cool. If it works out, can I stay with you? Um, you can either... I live in very cramped quarters currently, so I wish I could say yes, but I have to get approval from my roommates. <laughs> <laughs> well, I bet you didn't expect that we were going to hit you up for all this yeah. stuff. Or not. So, Maureen, I did get the uh, I did get the file open, and, and I see um, the way it's broken down is it says education and then general skills, and then and this yes. is what you're sending out for art department stuff now. Yes. Um, if I could just put out a recommendation for everyone in every department learn how to drive a cargo van and a cube truck, at least a 10 foot cube truck, because I have missed out on a lot of opportunities because I can't drive a truck. Oh, you haven't, you, have you tried to drive one yet? Um, I'm learning at the end of this month because I'm working a job where I need to drive the art cube truck to and from set. But, um, I learned how to drive a cargo van in New York city and it was the most terrifying experience of my life. Because you don't know fear until you're driving a massive truck full of, like, over $5,000 worth of equipment through rush hour <laughs> by yourself. It's sort but, of fun, uh, though. It's, a, it's, like, exciting. It's, like, fun in a, like, I'm about to get fired kind of way. I've broken a lot of cube truck mirrors in my, uh, in my day. Oh, yeah. Everyone, everyone gets into one fender bender. Mirrors, mirrors will be lost. Um. But I, I definitely recommend everyone learns how to do that. And then I have a, like, I personally have a bunch of really, like, other odd skills. Like, I know how to drive a scissor lift. Now, is, is, that, really is that an odd skill, though? Or is that a pretty common skill for... Uh... It's not a common skill for art department. Oh, okay. It, it's, um, for art grips, it kind of is. The people who do, like, the riggings of set, like, if you have, like, a moving tree on set, an art grip would be the one who set, set it up and makes it work. But, um... Yeah, it's it's not necessarily a common skill for someone in my field, so that kind of strikes people as unique. If you have unique skills, like you can like juggle power drills or something, um, which is not safe. But you know, if you have like a a unique skill that you think would be applicable to the department you're applying in, put it in there because you never know someone's going to see that and say, "Well, for this production, we might need that, so let me hire you." Mm -hmm. So I'm just that these guys can't see the uh, resume very clearly. So I'm just going to show. I'm going to read it out loud for them. So it has general skills. It says education, then general skills, and then it has um, specialized skills. Can operate a scissor lift. Confident while at heights, i.e., ladders are no threat. Uh, own toolkit with basics. Can operate power drill and bandsaw. Can drive cargo van. Valid and up to date driver's license. Experience in building a wide variety of props. Experience with creating special effects, makeup, looks, scars, wounds, body fluids, etc. Fluent in IKEA instructional manuals. Oh, that's really cute. That that's a really cute list of skills. Yeah, I I like to like I just happen to net be kind of like weird naturally. I guess quirky would be the word for it. Um, so I like to kind of keep a little bit of my personality in my resume, which you know I encourage. It, it works for certain. It works sometimes, and sometimes it doesn't. Like I just think I'm kind of a goof, and they're they get turned off by it. But it, in the past, you know, it's worked and I've made some really good friends on sets because of it, because they read my resume, thought it was cute, hired me and then like me. Yeah. And I, I strongly suspect there's like numerous producers that have had productions thwarted by um, misassembled Ikea. Uh, you have no idea. Yeah. No, I, I do. I do have an <laughs> idea. <laughs> it's something that well, sounds, it sounds like it's uh, inconsequential, but it, it uh, I think after a producer's had that happen once they would, uh, highlight that on a resume. Yeah. I mean, for, um, for my specific department, it's really good to know how to read instructional manuals for furniture because we do, we do a lot of building of furniture that we buy on set. And then we do a lot of taking it down and returning it to the store because furniture gets kind of pricey after a while. Um, so I thought it was important that I specify that I actually am like pretty decent. Well, I'm good at putting IKEA furniture together because typically people buy from IKEA because IKEA accepts furniture returns. Not all furniture stores do. Um, Nate, you wondering about anything else? Um, we asked about how you get work. Yeah, I was, um, I was thinking about wanting to get into documentary after school, so I was just wondering. Um, there's a lot of opportunity for that. You know, I mean, you mentioned um, what Thompson was working on, but um, just in general in New York, like what have you seen? Um, 
I have I actually haven't seen too much documentary work. Like when I browse the sites that I use mostly are Production Hub, Mandy dot com and Craigslist, the um crew gig section of it. And I haven't seen too much documentary. New York is a very um what what you call it? They have a lot of stories going on, not so much documentaries. It's more like shorts and music videos and web series. And occasionally, occasionally in the summer, um, a lot of actually in the, in the summer, a lot of features run independent features run here. So, but Nate, you um, what you should do is suck up to Thompson. You know Thompson, so he's working on a documentary apparently now, so a documentary show. So you should, you know, ask him if you can intern. There. Uh, he works for, um, he got in with Discovery, the Discovery Channel, and he's been working a lot of jobs for them, which is what he ended up pulling me on at the end of the month for this show that he's on currently. So I would ask him how he got into working with the Discovery Channel. Thanks. Danny, you wondering about anything else? Well, some people are, some people are, like, they, they, I don't think they're, they're engaged in this. So oh, okay. Asking the people. Nah, I mean, this is been informative. Yeah, sorry, my answers have been kind of vague. I'm like, I'm not really sure how to answer it because I, you know, Champlain really isn't geared towards what I ended up going into. Um, so it's kind of hard for me to answer for, in, in like generalized terms without being specific to how it happened for me because you know, our department's kind of a different beast. It's, it's a lot different than getting into grip and electric or camera department. Um, or even production. Well, I think a lot of people go to film school and then they get out and onto sets and they figure out what they what they want to do. You know, once they're out there and, and starting to assist in departments. And it, it sounds like I mean, maybe it would have been better for you to have been at a you know an art school that did you know painting and whatnot for the four years. But I I think it's uh, fairly common for folks to go to film school and then move into, you know, something, something like art department or, you know, God knows what. Yeah, actually, a lot of the people I work with, um, they started off wanting to be like directors or cameramen and then ended up in doing the art end of things and like it better. I also have friends who kind of swing between departments where they'll do a lot of camera work, but if the opportunity arises for fun, they'll go um, build sets, you know. Cool. Anybody wonder about anything else? When you all know how to get in touch with Maureen if you want to. Um, okay, Maureen, thank you. Hey. Uh, you're, you're super great. Thanks for doing this. Yeah, no problem.